On Saturday nights, the evacuees had a bath, and Nanny inspected their heads for nits. The bath was huge and had iron feet with claws like a lion. They were only allowed four inches of hot water. It was rationed like almost everything else. And by the time it was Lenny's turn, it was, wasn't even hot anymore. Joyce was Nanny's favourite. Nanny curled her hair for her and pressed her hair ribbons for church on Sunday. Joyce put on a special cute voice when she talked to grown-ups, but when the evacuees were on their own, she was sharp-tongued and treacherous. Lenny spent a lot of time wandering alone in the gardens, where no one bothered him. One afternoon, when he pushed open the door of the walled garden, he found somebody else there. A young man with one leg was sitting on one of the stone benches. He was wearing an old tweed jacket with patched elbows, His empty trouser leg was pinned up and his crutches were propped neatly against the bench beside him. Hello there, said the man. It's all right, I do live here. I was just trying to do a bit of weeding. Are you Bill Penny's helper? Lenny asked him. Sort of, said the man. I used to shoot rabbits and pigeons when they got into his vegetable garden, but I don't anymore. This is one of my favourite places. Lenny hovered by the gate, not sure what to say next. My name's Mick, the man continued. Don't let me having one leg bother you. How did you lose it? Lenny wanted to know. I left it on a beach in France, the man told him. But I'll be getting a new one soon. Will it be wooden? No, light metal, I think, with joints. There was a friendly silence. Then Lenny remembered that he was not to talk to strangers. He was not sure whether, since this man lived here, he counted as a stranger or not but he thought he had better be on the safe side. I've got to go now, he said. Mick just waved. On wet days, Lenny sometimes followed Nellie around the house and they chatted while she dusted and polished. In the great hall, there was a suit of armour and swords hanging on the walls and pictures of battle scenes with soldiers in red coats. There was one full-length portrait of a very grand officer in a splendid uniform. That's Lady Devas's grandfather, said Nellie. They've got a lot of soldiers in the family. Lady Devas's husband was killed fighting in the First World War, and her son's a war hero. He's got medals and all. My dad's in the army, Lenny told her. I'm joining up myself soon, said Nellie. Women's Land Army. Lenny longed for Mum to come, but she wrote to say that she would not visit until he had settled in. She was working in a fireman's canteen. She was not a good writer, and her letters were short, but she saved up her candy ration and sent Lenny a bar of chocolate now and again. Lenny saw Mick around the place sometimes, helping Bill Penny or Lady DeVass, but Mick never came into the kitchen for his meals. "'There's something been killing rabbits in my vegetable garden,' said Bill one afternoon, when he was sipping his tea. "'Not that I mind,' he added. "'I'm glad of it.' A fox, suggested Mrs B. No, it's not a fox. More like a big cat. It got some pigeons too. It'll be one of those wild cats that's living in the barn, said Mrs B. Very fierce they are. Or perhaps a lion escaped from the zoo, said Joyce slyly, looking sideways at Lenny. Lions kill people. They wait in the dark and spring out at you and tear your stomach out.